Hey, hello, and welcome to our 12 year anniversary on YouTube. So to celebrate, we thought 12 we'd- 12 years. 12 years, amazing. Awesome. Congratulations, Tim. High five. Still married. Still married too. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> <laughs> to celebrate, I thought we'd do a Q and A. So I put uh, one of those things on Instagram and on our community tab. I, I asked... know, cause you told me ahead of time. <laughs> So helpful. <laughs> so helpful. So let's get started. Yeah. So the first, the first question is, why did you start doing YouTube? There's there's a variety of answers to this question. So and we have different reasons, I think. So. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, a good friend of mine, David in Toronto, uh, his uncle needed a uh, commercial shop for his real estate company, and so he asked what that would cost. And I'd never done any kind of filmmaking whatsoever, and I said, well, it's going to cost whatever the camera costs. So I went and searched out what a, an HD video camera would cost, and uh, I think it was about two thousand dollars. It was a Sony, um, and it was actually the HDR. Anyway, it doesn't matter which one. It was the HDR HC7. Bought it from an awesome group of people called G&G Electronics. Shout out to them in Scarborough, Ontario. And uh, shot the commercial. Um, everything went great. And then I had this camera, an HD camera at home, <laughs> which we didn't use. Yeah, said, so that's Tim's reason. <laughs> well, no, that's well, we had the camera. Right, and Tim said... Well, Let's, you, you you were teaching. Yeah, I was teaching. And what would end up happening was, as you guys know, my classes are highly themed. So I was teaching in studio locations. And people would, if they missed my classes because they were sick or they were away, people would be like, well, I would, can you repeat it or what have you? And I'm just a very highly creative person. And so it didn't really... It didn't appeal to me to go back. So what I, what we decided to do was we would film the classes. Now you guys have to remember that being a YouTuber wasn't a thing back then. This is 2012 and to that end you couldn't even put the entire yoga class on they YouTube a then. Limit. There was a 10 minute limit. That's right. So we weren't really thinking about like, you, why did you start doing YouTube? We didn't start doing YouTube. What we started doing was recording my yoga classes every week and I, why did we put them on YouTube at all, even? So what happened was we started, we uploaded them to a, a different company who doesn't, they don't exist anymore, I don't right. believe. It's Blip. called blip.tv. Yeah. So we uploaded the videos in their entirety. So they were typically an hour. Mm -hmm. And um, part of the deal was that because we were recording to tape and the process was so arduous to get it from tape onto a computer without any kind of real editing and then put it onto um, blip.tv so that people could actually watch it from their homes. The whole process of filming it was one thing, but actually editing it and uploading it, that took about a day, 24 hour period. Yeah, we, we, our release day has always been Friday, but the reason I always say that is, is that it took us a whole week to do it. Like, because you'd have to, we're filming, that's a helicopter, we're it filming is, yeah. at, we're filming on Ross Bay, it's so beautiful here today, this is my favorite kind of day here in Victoria, I love it, it's so cloudy and dreamy and it mysterious, is. yeah. It's not cold, although you're... I dusty. know, I'm actually hot, we, maybe we should like cut and I'll take my mic off, yeah, I think it's I reset might. too, because it's actually really humid. But yeah, it would take us all week and um, yeah, because it, you'd have to take it off the tape and then download it and then compress it and then upload it and you'd stay up with it through the night and baby it. Keep or I'd yeah. go to bed and keep my fingers, <laughs> keep fingers crossed, crossed that, that it would the actually, internet, the file would be ready to be uploaded. Yeah, because the internet might drop in the middle of the night or whatever. Like Or rendering, like converting yeah. it so that it was a file that was uploadable. Yeah, to, crazy. To that crazy. Was crazy. Like, so the real answer to the question yeah, is, why, why did we start YouTube? We, start, we went off topic. We actually started YouTube because what we were trying to do was help record the themed classes for people and we had no idea like it was kind of blew our minds was that like people so all of a sudden there were people in italy shout out to viola who's still a member she was one of our first members who were like oh i love your classes we're like what yeah, <laughs> and we awesome. just like had no idea that was going to happen we were just trying to service our local people that's all we were trying to do when we started that's why we started youtube yeah well, that was a more of the circuitous answer, but we got yeah, there. Yeah, We got there. Okay. What's the next question? Do you still remember the first class you taught? I do remember the first class we taught. I, so do I. You do you? Well, I remember the first class I taught. <laughs> <laughs> 
episode 500. <laughs> I'm going to put it right here. <laughs> True. <laughs> Everybody, if you haven't done that class, you have to do it because it's really funny. <laughs> and people love it. Really? Yeah. Okay. I don't know if they repeat it, but no, maybe if they're having a bad day. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah, people love that class. But do you remember your first class? Like, I wonder, like, my first class ever teaching or, like, or my first class well, that I either filmed. Well, Can you answer? So I remember the first class on YouTube. I remember I was so nervous because it's a whole different thing to record a class and have it, like, in perpetuity, you know, like, people being able to go back to it. I remember, like, having that connection with the the lens and connecting with people I was very nervous about. So I had two of my students come and I, at that point, there's a big difference between teaching in person and being a video teacher. And I hadn't developed that nuance yet. Of course, I was just starting. And so I was really interested in being, in still teaching, like being the same kind of teachers in a classroom. That really doesn't translate that well on video, which I learned over time. Um, I taught how to have uh, th th about the relationship with your body. I had just sort of come out of the training with Phoenix Rising Yoga Therapy, the group facilitation pr training. Is this episode one? This is, yeah. I I remember episode one because... We filmed. There were two other people in it. Two other people. Do you remember their names? Terry Marucci and there's a gentleman. They were, they were students of mine. Thomas maybe? Or? I forget his name now. He was really nice. Yeah, both super sweet to come. Can you imagine just taking a chance? I mean, like, you know. So now they're stuck. On YouTube forever. On YouTube, in perpetuity. <laughs> yeah. Probably white balance would be wrong. The camera angle. You know what? No, did I say Terry Marucci? You did. But Laurie it Clune. It was Laurie. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, Who went put, on to do her PhD in nursing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll put the link to episode one so you can see the. Yeah. And to that end, actually, How bad it was. <laughs> well, yeah, actually, it'll give you hope if you're if you're thinking of teaching, but and or going on YouTube. But the thing is, um, one of the things that we're doing over the course of this year is that when you've been on YouTube as long as we have been on, we've done so many series, so many classes that there's a limited number of playlists that you can put on your YouTube page. And so one of the things that we're doing is sort of digitally remastering and making new playlists and putting them in the membership without um, ads. And I'm also going to do like a little behind the scenes of each um, series. series. Yeah. So fun. for the 12 year anniversary, so for we're members, it's a total for members. Yeah. yeah. That's great. And, and it'll, it'll be all well, the playlists will be all there. the playlists. That'll be awesome. Yeah. Over time, we're going to do that slowly. But um, yeah, so for the 12 year anniversary, we'll put the first series up. I've already written that up. We've got to put it up and do a little behind the scenes of it. So we won't share all the behind the scenes of that now, but that was the first class we taught, I taught on YouTube. What's next? Okay, what was your favorite filming location ever? That's from Brenda Bohoon, who just recently visited us here in Victoria. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sweet couple. What was your favorite filming location ever? Uh, I have a few. I well, can't narrow it down to one. I really liked filming in Tofino. Yeah, that's my, one of my favorites too. It was really lovely, that expansive beach. Mm -hmm. Again, beach. I'll put my favorite one up here. Yeah. So people can click on it. Um, we had one like, where there was a Labrador came over and said hello to you while you were lying there. I think that's in the membership though. Oh, is that right? Yeah, oh, it's okay. not on YouTube. I don't know that we, we when we filmed in Tofino that we put them on the membership. There's one coming in in 2022 that's in Tofino on the on YouTube. But to answer the question, mm -hmm. favorite location for me it was mm -hmm. Tofino, but also we have the other channel, the uh, lifestyle channel, mm -hmm. and the lifestyle channel we did, we used to do a bunch of vlogs mm -hmm. where we would travel around different islands mm -hmm. in particular, mm -hmm. and we did um we did Saturna and we did a whole bunch of the local islands here. We call them the Gulf, the Southern Gulf Islands. And those day trips, doing those vlogs, we got to repeat that because that was amazing fun. Exploring, yeah. hiking, exhausting. So, to, so at least so they can find them, two of my other favorite locations that we did actually film Yoga with Melissa on YouTube. Um, were in Souk. We did some uh, a sort of extended Souk visit where we stayed in a year and we filmed some of those. Oh, yes. Those are some of the most gorgeous location um, filming that we did, I think. Why and were then they the so other, pretty, do you think? 
Just the background looks a lot like this, actually. Just, it was, it was this time of year, autumn, the sun is lower in the sky, a lot of just kind of beautiful grays. We shot and early in the morning. Early in the really morning, quiet. late in the afternoon. It was just perfect. Yeah. And then the other uh, favorite location was during COVID when we did uh, oh, yeah. in the in the forest in the spring and all those shooting star flowers and we did 30 in a row it, so yeah. they had a really consistent look. Is that Pearson College? Is that what's called? Yeah, that was, yeah. Pearson yeah. College, so that's way out, maybe an hour and a half that yeah, way. Yeah, and we filmed the there a few times, but that time of year in particular is just absolutely magical oh, in there. we had deer walking past yeah. and investigating and we had how no uh, And I eagles. think the fact that we were there over several days in a row. We, yeah. went, we went there every, every day. Every day, sort of same COVID time, yeah. And just hiked into the middle of nowhere. It was quiet. There was no, there were no helicopters or airplanes going past, which is, for the person behind the camera, I can't tell you that stuff drives you crazy. Even right now while we're filming, you know, I can hear yeah, people airplanes and cars. And, yeah. and, um, but when you have your Outdoor headphones filming. on, it's, you, you're really zoned yeah. in on the audio. And this year, you know, guys, we really went to a lot of extra effort to make sure to try to film as much as possible for you outside. We filmed our entire 2021-22 season for you, so they'll all be outside except for our live classes. Speaking and of helicopters. Yeah, and <laughs> you can hear, because we're not cutting for this one, that that's an extra, a lot of extra work because when you film indoors, you don't have to cut for sound <laughs> like that. Yeah. yeah. And also, like we're we're on the beach here. There's a road right behind the camera. Mm -hmm. But it's closed it's today. It's closed for yeah. some kind of this is why we construction. Never... So that's why we hardly ever shoot down here. But it's the most gorgeous beach. Yeah. Okay. When did you feel you found your style? Now, maybe think about this from your perspective as a, as a videographer, and I'll answer it from my perspective as a, a yoga teacher. Sure. So while, while I'm answering it. So for me, I think it took a long time because I felt that I had to be like everybody else in the more popular styles for a long time. Like I felt like, like what's popular on YouTube is Hatha yoga and yoga flow and very much more active styles. And I would say it's only been much more recently uh, that I've settled into my own style. So we moved here in 2014. Mm -hmm. so. May 1st. Yeah. And a couple of years after that, 2016. Mm -hmm. So was that's only five years ago. And I've been teaching for <laughs> 20 years. So 15 years into teaching, I found my style <laughs> where I really became confident enough to slow down because I'm really a water element person. And uh, I, I found yin yoga, became confident enough to say, yeah, it's not, it doesn't belong to all these other teachers. It's okay for me to teach it too. Same with restorative yoga and, and yoga nidra. So uh, it took a long time for me to feel confident enough to say, this is me, this is my style, this is what works for me. When I sit in this, uh, it resonates most for me and then it attracts the people that are meant to be with me. So that took a long time. And I have to say that it's continuing to evolve, right? Uh, I'm going through the same thing right now with Qigong. Like, it doesn't belong to these teachers. It's okay for me to dip my toes into it and to step into that as well. And uh, so it's an ongoing process. How about you for your video style? Because that's changed a lot. If you look at your first video, <laughs> it evolves. You grow, right? Yeah, I think um, I think the first step was when we switched from that tape-based Sony camcorder, and we went to uh, SD cards. So just shooting. So the style actually shifted there because the quality of the camera and the quality of the lens improved. Mm -hmm. uh, my next biggest shift was actually switching over to. Um, well, my next biggest shift, or the biggest shift that I had, you're going to notice that the background is kind of blurry. We call that bokeh, you might call it you know, depth of field, there's a variety of terms for that. And that's achieved by having what they call fast glass, or a lens in front of a camera that can shoot what they call wide open. And that style of shooting I always thought was really cinematic and really pretty. And um, 
I think that's, you know what, working with a mentor in my photography world, um, I really wanted to improve my filmmaking or videography for the YouTube channel and for Melissa's videos. And so what I did was I went off and I shot a bunch of, uh, of people with, uh, with the camera with, uh, for photos. It was, typically it was models that I was shooting. And it was that learning about how to shoot with a shallow depth of field that really, really helped. And then I was able to bring it together and, and put it together for these types of videos. So now the camera has changed. This is a new camera th thanks to all the donations that we received or received uh, in 2020. I think that was in October. So yeah, so I think also having the financial resources to be able to bring the vision that you have for the aesthetic yeah. that you're trying to achieve now as well. Now we're shooting 4K instead of HD, so mm -hmm. this is a 4K. Right, video. like when we started, like it was 720, 360p. No, we we started at, no, we started at 1080. 1080p. We did start at 1080p, uh, but some of the videos had to go up onto YouTube for file sizes and the 10 minute. They, some of those were 720. Yeah. You're right. So, yeah. So it's a combination of what equipment you have available to you, what the technology was available to you as well. And also because of the donations, I ended up with a much yeah. more powerful computer, which means now yes, I'm that was to that was really work. holding you back for a long time. I, and I didn't even realize how yeah. much, like sometimes you don't even know, but if you can take these big leaps forward in technology mm -hmm. and just go with it, now we're shooting in 4K and it takes me less time to edit in 4K than it did in right. 1080p. On yeah, the so there were a lot of things that you weren't doing because you, your computer just couldn't even handle it. Drone footage, there'll be yeah. drone footage in these videos now that before took just so long and now yeah. I can actually edit in what they call real time so I can scrub through a, a you know a clip of uh, drone footage it was near impossible on the old computer so and drone footage was even an issue like legally which you've done your studying and you've done tests and I'm you're, legal. you're legal yeah which so, means I know I can't fly here because we're too close to the airplanes <laughs> right so there's lots of different there's so many different things that yeah, uh, contribute exactly. to your style right yeah, yeah it's so it was such an interesting question really which you don't even was the biggest thing for me was yeah I knew what I wanted and I knew it was going to be expensive and now yeah. I'm just really grateful and also now and, it's lighter yeah. Oh, yeah. Because we like to film outdoors, so uh, we wh whatever we film with, we need to be able to both just be able to put it on our back and walk into wh whatever situation. Yeah. Yeah. I'll pan afterwards and show you what our kit looks like. Yeah. When we put it on. Because that was that used to be crazy, and now it's doable, and and it's meant that a lot more locations, beautiful locations, have opened up to us as a result. Yeah. Which I think really contributes to our style. Yeah, you know what I'll do? I'm going to snap my video from the phone and I'll put it on here so you can keep Now, if you're just starting out, I think, and I don't know if this is, I mean, people may be watching this because of that, but what Tim's doing with his, his cell phone, I think we have actually shot entire Yoga with Melissa videos and, and all our vlogs are shot on our cell phones. So don't let equipment hold you back. We always say that. I have an entire that. YouTube channel that is only, only shot, shot on, on cell, cell phones. phones. Yeah, yeah. So the next question is, how do you always guarantee to renew your content? And I think it's a, a question renew? of... Yeah, I think it, it was in Spanish translated. So I think the... Um, how do you keep it fresh? How mean? do you keep it fresh? That yeah. And this is a question, this is something that I really, in a way, have struggled with a lot this year. Um, I do burn out. Uh, and when I do burn out, it tends to be because I'm trying to feed the algorithm and because I'm trying to feed everybody else out there and so this past year I took a really big step back like this past summer and really looked at okay what is it that I'm trying to do and I know I love what I'm doing I know I wouldn't want to be doing anything else and so I looked at you know why I love it why I'm connected to it and I really regrouped and uh, when I did that, it's something that I'm teaching in our membership community right now. Like, because so many people say I want to practice yoga daily, but that be then it becomes a discipline and it becomes a, a, a grind. And uh, if we can really connect with why we love what we love, and there's ways to do that that I've really had a mindset shift around, it just it's easy and I find that creativity begets creativity it's like you do one thing and then it's like oh we should do this this and this so um, in a way creativity isn't ever been a problem for me I'm a very creative person 
but it's um, been loving what I do that so that it doesn't become a grind that's been more of an issue for me um, so that I stay connected with the joy of it, the beauty of it. What, uh, for me, something having meaning to it, feeling really connected to it is really important to me. So yeah, that's been more of an important thing. And this is an interesting question. Did you ever think about the positive impact your videos would have on people? When we first started? Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. Did I you? Got, yeah. I got to say, I have a mixed relationship with this one. I, I Sometimes I tap into that and I think about it. Especially, I feel like, I feel like I'm going to get emotional now. It's okay, sweetie. <laughs> Especially when I'm feeling like, you know, this is YouTube. You get a lot of, you, not a lot, but you do get some nasty comments. And you do go through sometimes, like I said, this where you feel like you're just feeding the algorithm, and it's you get disconnected. But when oh, we you get can, some lovely, yeah, we get some the really good comments lovely. way out we low, get people outweigh the sending bad donations ones. Donations yeah. with lovely comments. Yeah. We get people sending it way outweighs. To don't a don't. Box. But uh, you know the the eclipses. Our thing. brains have a negativity bias, so yes. d don't get us wrong. Don't get me wrong. Um, I do, there are times when I'm feeling down, I, there are certain people that I think about that I know that the, like, it's great to think about the individuals because there are certain people that I know that Spirit has brought to me that, th that these classes have pulled them out of a very dark place. Like a You've very a dark massive place, impact massive on people impact. All the way around the world, and we hear about it, and we don't necessarily think about that at beginning when we start filming, because no. that would. Be I didn't go into it that way because then you, you're going in with like the savior complex, and no, I, that's and that's problem. not it at all. I mean, I have to be doing it for me and for my own personal development. Like it. It's not, I'm, I am I want to be a guide on the side, not a sage on the stage. And that's always been how it's been for me. But when I do get to that dark, when I go to those places where I'm feeling burned out, I only have to think about a, a handful of people that I know mm -hmm. that I've, that I've been there for at very dark times in their lives. And yeah, um, but I don't spend a lot of time thinking about it. I think it would put too much pressure on me. We've been going for quite a while. How long did you want this video to be? We could divide it into two parts. Yeah? Yeah. So Let's keep we, going. So we're going to cut now and then start up again in the next video? Okay. All right. So, thanks for watching. <laughs> Give this video a thumbs up. And maybe let us know your favorite Yoga with Melissa video in the comments. And uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, then be sure to subscribe and let us know what year you joined us. You know, how long you've been around for, because we've been here for 12. But <laughs> yeah, when did you find us? When did you find us? Well, yeah, yeah, what was the first number video on Yoga with Melissa or Lifestyle Channel or what have you? Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs>